Hi, in this video we are going to continue with our development of LQ optimal control for discrete time systems with the value of the state variable at the end of the control horizon free. In particular, we are going to uh, focus on steady state solutions to Riccardi equations and we are going to extend the control horizon to infinity. In order to motivate the development, let me uh, first recap what we learned in the previous lecture. We learned that uh, the sequence of optimal state feedback gains evolves in time. It's initialized at the final time and evolves uh, backwards in time. But for most of the control horizon, most of the time in control horizon, it remains constant. The question then immediately pops up, why don't we then use instead of those time varying gains something finite and a good candidate for the, uh, something constant and a good candidate for this constant state feedback gain is the limit with the discrete time going to minus infinity. Of course we will compute such a state feedback gain from the limiting value of the solution to the difference Riccati equation. Such constant solution will be, of course, only suboptimal on a finite horizon, but it will be perfectly optimal on an infinite horizon. That means for n is equal to infinity. The cost function then, of course, uh, does not contain the term penalizing the state at the final time. So this is how it looks like. And uh, in order to compute uh, the limiting value of S, we can either solve the difference Riccati equation for a large enough number of steps, or we can invoke this particular condition that simply <coughs> the, the value of the solution to Riccati equation uh, does not change uh, from step to step. Now, if I substitute to one of the formats of a Riccati equations that we showed in the previous video, this is what I get. So instead of uh, difference or recurrent uh, Riccati equation, we have a discrete time algebraic Riccati equation. Note that uh, we can uh, take advantage of having solvers for solution of this equation in MATLAB and elsewhere. And I also want to, to emphasize that this is just one of the formats that you can find. A few more formats are listed in, uh, in the lecture notes and in the literature elsewhere. Now, rather than uh, elaborating on these, I would like to get some intuition by considering the scalar case, as usual. But let's now make the notation simpler and I will omit the symbol for infinity. And this is how the uh, algebraic Riccati equation looks like. So far not a great insight, but let's now multiply both sides by rr plus b squared times s. So this is uh, what we get on the left and on the right. <coughs> I think it's now pretty obvious what our algebraic Riccati equation actually stands for, right? It's a quadratic equation, quadratic in S. And this is pretty useful insight uh, because we know that a quadratic equation in the scalar case has uh, two or no real solutions, right? But then just compare it with uh, what we've learned f about, the, or, or uh, compare it with the fact that uh, the difference Riccati equation initialized by Sn converges to some S infinity uniquely. If it does converge, it will converge uniquely. So uh, now, how can we reconcile the, the two? In order to do that, in order to reconcile the algebraic Riccati equation with the difference Riccati equation, we need to answer a few questions. First, we actually need to know if the sequence of SK is actually converging to something. Second, we need to know if uh, the limit to which the, the sequence converges, if it's actually dependent on the initialization by S uh, sub n. And third, 
we also need to know now which uh, solution of uh, discrete time algebraic Riccati equation to choose. And the one that we choose is it actually stabilizing our closed loop system? Uh, well, this of course only makes sense for systems on an infinite horizon, whatever stability issues are only relevant if we consider the time evolving towards zero. Now, th to answer these questions, uh, it's uh, we would need quite a lot of technical stuff, which I will defer to the lecture notes. Let me at least now give the, uh, the answers here. So the answer to the first question is that the system needs to be stabilizable, the system A and B, and then the answer to the second question is maybe a little bit more uh, tricky. It says that some auxiliary system, fictitious system, needs to be detectable. Let me now uh, give some illustration of what's going on here. We will consider unstable system with Q matrix set to zero. Then the cost function looks like this. But with this cost function, uh, it's obvious that the minimum achievable value is a zero. Uh, and corresponding to this choice will be no control at all. However, since our system is unstable, the, uh, with, without any control, it will, be, it will stay unstable. And this is obviously undesirable. You may regard it as an extreme situation, but there may be cases when the matrix Q contains some zero elements on the diagonal, and these could, in a sense, behave similarly as the pure zero Q matrix, in that uh, the instability in X could go unnoticed, will not be reflected in the optimization cost. And the condition, the detectability condition, then is here to make sure that this cannot happen. We'll illustrate this more in uh, the exercises by means of an example.